So again, my intuition says for me to shove all in instead of check raising. So I decide to follow my intuition and shove all in. I'm all in. I'm all in. What's up, everybody? It's a Friday night. Bellagio's room is packed for the World Poker Tour event. Plenty of familiar faces in the room and great day to play plenty of hours of poker. Now let's get down to business because today we have a 10 hour session that things will keep getting better and better and let's get it. First hand in this episode we see King Jack offsuit from the middle position. It falls to me and I open raise to 30. Button and big blind call. We go three ways to the flop which is one where we hit top pair. I decide to see bet two thirds of the pot. $60. Only button call. We go heads up to the turn, which is a great one. A deuce of clubs. Now there are two flush draws in the board and button will pretty much never have a deuce here. So I'm gonna keep betting. I bet 120 now, around half pot. Button calls again. The river comes a queen of clubs. Definitely not a good card, because one of the flush draws get there. Also a queen is a over card for my pair of jacks. Here we find ourselves in that classical situation between bet folding or check calling and because I don't see so much value into betting and I can see button bluffing sometimes, I decide to check and call if he bets. I check and he checks back and button shows queen jack of hearts, getting really lucky in the river and at least he didn't extract one more street of value. Next hand I see ace queen on the earlier position, I open raise to 30, button 3 bets 130, Pretty large 3 bets. Looking at him, I feel like Ace Queen is gonna be ahead of most of his range. At least a good portion of it. So even though this Ace Queen offsuit usually plays better by 4 betting or folding, I decided to call and play post flop. Flop is great. Queen 8 4 with 2 hearts. I have the Ace of Hearts. I check. He C bets 130 and I decide to call. Turns a complete blank, a deuce of clubs. I check again. And now he checks back. The river is great, a 4 of diamonds. Now we're gonna bet for value. I believe a great bet here would be something like 80% of the pot. But instead, I decided not to be greedy and bet half pot for $270. He thinks for a long time, but in the end decides to fold and we win this hand. Next hand I'm in the hijack with pocket 8s. I open raise to 30, cut off 3 bets to 110. Cut off seems to have a pretty wide 3 betting range. And here in a GTO perspective, I can either go with the call, raise or fold. This is what we call a mixed strategy. And in this hand versus this player, I decided to call and see a flop. Flop is great, queen 7 3 with 2 diamonds. I have the 8 of diamonds. I check to him, we're playing heads up. He see bets $80, one third of the pot. I call, turn is great, a queen of hearts. Now it's less likely for him to have a queen. And if he had an over pair, he would need to be more cautious about me having a queen. I check again, he checks back, river is a 5, now I could consider betting for value, but I rather check and allow his bluffs to bluff, which is not what happens, he checks back and we win this hand. Next hand I'm on the big blind, button raises to 30 and I see pocket 5s, clear call here to play out of position heads up, flop is great, queen jack 5 rainbow, I check to him, he bets $50, I'm definitely gonna check raise here, I don't block no jack or queen that he has a lot in his range. I decide to check raise to $180, he calls, turn is not great, a 9 of diamonds. Now if I had king 10, I would get there, so that makes him be more cautious about it. And he could also have king 10 as well. Here I should mostly bet instead of checking, but in this particular time I just felt it was a good option to check versus that particular player. Sometimes it's hard to explain to you guys here because when you're playing poker, live poker, the players are right in front of you and you can really feel their energy. Many times I am intuitive about my plays and in this particular time I felt like the best option was to check. So that's what I did, I check. He bets 250, effective stack is really deep. I'm totally considering check raising here. 
But again, my intuition told me that it was better to call instead of check raising. I'm losing for quite a few combination of hands that he has in his range, such as queens, jacks, nines, and king 10. So instead of check raising and putting a lot of pressure on him, I decided to check call and control the pot, at least for now. I call and we see a horrible river, a eight of clubs. And now, even though I'm upset about how the hand turned out, I'm stuck between the option of bet folding or check calling for any bet he does. And in this particular time, I felt like the best option was to bet fold. So I decided to lead $340. He quickly shoves all in for $1,800. And I don't see no better option other than folding. He later told me he had King 10, which even though I believe him, I cannot trust him 100% because he didn't show his cards. But if he had King 10, we lost close to the minimum here. At least we're still up something like $100 this session. Next hand, I'm in the small blind with 9-3 suited, 3 limpers, I complete, and 5 players to the flop, which is one where we are huge. Queen Jack 9 with 2 diamonds. I got a bottom pair and a flush draw. I check, early position bets 50. And in a board like this, there are pretty much no hands that I'm completely beat. I'm ahead of flush draws better than mine. I'm even ahead of simple pairs like ace queen, let's say for example. I'm slightly ahead in equity versus a hand like that. So here I consider a great spot to check raise and this is what I do. I check raise big for 225, he folds and we win the hand. This next hand is pretty interesting. I see king jack offsuit from the small blind, cut off raises 2x for $20, button calls. And here, even though most of the times I'm gonna three bet or fold, with this particular hand versus those particular players in this particular spot, I decided to call the 2x raise and see a flop. Big blind calls as well, 4 players see the flop, which is one where we have top pair. I check, cut off c-bets 20, I decide to check raise to 80 to protect my equity versus hands that I'm beating. Cut off calls, we go heads up to the turn, which comes an 8 of clubs. I decide to check the street and he checks back, river comes a 4 of spades. Now I decide to check to call for any bet he does, but instead of betting a standard amount, he just made a big over bet here. I was feeling it was coming. What? Before I call you, talk to me. Yeah? You ask, you, you ask me if I have a king? I have a king. I gotta call 360 for a pot that will have 960. What? For this call to be profitable, I gotta be right around 37% of the times. Which honestly, I don't know if I'm gonna be. In the end, I decide to call. Nice hand, man. And he shows 7 5 of diamonds. Great bet by him. And we got owned in this play, pretty much. I buy in for 400 more. Next hand, I see Ace Jack offsuit from the small blind. Cut off raises to 30. Button calls. And then I realize that Button is flatting a lot. Which, even though she could do that, Button is sashimi. If you don't know who is it, she's a vlogger that many people know as well. She shouldn't be doing that with me in her left, because otherwise that's gonna incentivize me to squeeze. And that's what I'm gonna do in this hand. I decide to 3-bet big to $170 from the small blind. Only sashimi calls, we go heads up to the flop, which comes one that won't hit most of our ranges. Me from the small blind and she from the button. I have the ace of clubs, which gives me more equity. I'm gonna c-bet here, and I don't need to make it that big. I see bet 120, around one third of the pot. Sashimi calls, turn is a blank, a four of diamonds. I'm representing over pairs here, and this four of diamonds would be a great card for an over pair, such as aces, kings, queens, jacks, tens, nines. Effective stack is 1500, and here I decided to keep betting, and I choose a sizing that I send the message that I'm gonna shove in the river, which most likely I won't do, but Sashimi doesn't know that. So now I bet $350, Little less than two thirds of the pot. Sashimi folds and we win this hand. Flip. You want to flip now? Yeah, this much. Did you see your cards? No. No. Seems like Sashimi likes to gamble, 80. and I chose to be nice and gamble with her. Eighty dollars each, all in pre-flop. You're gonna be on the vlog no matter what. You open. I have here. One more. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> I end up winning. Not good enough. Next hand, I see Jack 8 suited from the cutoff. I open raise to 30. Small blind and big blind call. We go three ways to the flop, which comes king 10 6 rainbow. They check to me and I decide to check back. Turn is great. Now I'm huge. I have a straight flush draw. So when they check to me, 
I'm definitely gonna bet here. I decide to bet $40. Looking back, I feel like I could have done a little bigger. Something like 80% of the pot. Only big blind calls. River is great for my range. An ace of diamonds. I could have made two pair here with something like ace 10, ace 9. Big blind checks. And I'm gonna bluff. I got one of the worst combos I could have here. Jack high. And this board favors way more my range than big blind's range. So that's a great spot to bluff. I decide to overbet for $210. Big blind quickly fold. Three Mr. Flush. I knew it. Next hand I see a6 offsuit from the cutoff. I open raise to 30. Sometimes I'm just gonna open fold this hand, but this time I decided to raise. Only big blind calls. We go heads up to the flop, which is one that I hit top pair. Ace, 10, 8, 2 spades. He checks to me and I see bet to 30. Big blind calls. I make two pairs in the turn. Big blind checks to me and I'm gonna keep betting. I bet two thirds of the pot now, $80. Big blind raises to $200. Honestly, I'm not sure what he's trying to achieve with this play, but I'm not gonna fold two pair here, especially with two flush draws in the board. So I see no better option than calling here. River is a queen of diamonds. Now big blind bets 240. And again, I see no better option than calling. And that's what I do. And big blind decided to bluff his 10-7 of spades. And we win this hand. Next hand, I see jack 10 suited from the hijack. Middle position raises to 35. As many of you already know, in this spot, I will either 3-bet or fold the vast majority of the times. And Jack-10 suited is definitely under my 3-betting range from the hijack. So I 3-bet to 105, only middle position calls, we go heads up to the flop, which is a great one for my range and for my hand. I got open ender and I have many ace-x hands in my range. So when she checks to me, I'm gonna keep betting. I see bet 120. <laughs> What's her name? What's her name? What's her name? Sophie, I'm gonna put in. She folds and we win this hand. We're playing for a little more than 4 hours of game and I'm really hungry. I think about stacking my chips and going to eat somewhere. But seems like I'm too addicted to poker. I get something to eat and go back to the same room I was already in. It is 10pm of a Friday so it's a great time to play poker at Bellagio. But now we are playing in the high limit room. This is gonna be a really fun table. With some of them you might already know them. Trust me, the game will go crazy in this table. This episode is about to reach the best part. First hand in this table, I see King 10 suited from the button. Cutoff raises to 30. I decide to 3 bet to 105 from the button. Only cutoff calls. We go heads up to the flop. Flop comes Jack 7 deuce, rainbow with 1 diamond. He checks to me and I'm gonna keep betting here. My range is stronger than his and there's a relevant chance this board didn't hit none of us. So when he checks to me, I decide to see bet and he folds. And this is one of the reasons why I rather 3 betting in position other than just flat calling. Because I don't necessarily need to hit my cards to win the pot. While if I just flat it, my range wouldn't be so strong. And then he would probably be the aggressor and win the hand. Next hand I see king queen offsuit from the cutoff. I open raise to 30, button 3 bets to $100. Here I will either 3 bet or fold. I'm not gonna call with this particular hand because it doesn't develop so well post-flop. So I decide to 4-bet to $350. How much is that? Button goes all in for $1400. I ask how much is that but I definitely won't call with this hand. I fold and we go to the next hand. Next hand I get pocket kings from the small blind. Early position raises to 30. Button 3-bets to $110. With my image in this table, it would be a huge mistake not to call for bet here. If I just flat, it would represent a lot of strength as well, so all I gotta do here is 4 betting and that's it. No need to get creative. I called for bet to $400. Everybody folds and I win the hand. A lot of those games is played pre-flop. A very important aspect for you to be profitable at 510 is you playing fundamentally good pre-flop. You will still need to have a good post-flop game as well. But if you already know how to master pre-flop ranges, 3 bets, 4 bets and etc. You will already be really close to reach profitability in those games. Next hand I'm on the button with queen 10 suited, cutoff raises to 30. And with this particular hand, in this particular position, I decided to flat from the button with queen 10 suited. Big blind calls as well, so 3 players see the flop. Flop comes jack 5-3 rainbow, 1 diamond. They check to me and I decide to check back. Turn comes a deuce of hearts, we all check again. River is a 10 of clubs, 
Now they check to me again, and I'm pretty sure they don't have a jack and I'm winning here, so I'm gonna bet. But instead of betting something like half pots or two thirds, I decided to polarize my hand and pretend I will either have a great hand or nothing. Which is not the case, I got second pair, but I'm pretty sure I'm winning here, so I decide to bet big for value. I overbet pretty much 1.3x pot, big blind folds, cut off things for a while and ends up calling. I show my hand, it's good and we win this hand. Next hand I'm in the middle position with pocket tens, under the gun raises 30, I 3 bet to 100 as I'm gonna do with all the hands I decide to join this hand. Hijack 4 bets to $200, really small 4 bet, here I'm either gonna call or 5 bet, which with pocket tens I don't think it's a good time to 5 bet, so I call, and we go heads up to the flop, which comes a great one, ace 10 8 rainbow, I check, he see bets really small to $100, effective stack is 1600 and I want his chips, so I decide to check raise here, and I make it big, I check raise to $400, if he calls, the plan is to shove most of the rivers, which he does, he calls, turn is not the best, a 9 of hearts, now queen jack gets there, that I could personally have queen jack, I don't see him having queen jack though, code for betting really small, from the hijack preflop, and now even though this card is good for my range, which is gonna probably make him fold more often to my bet, I believe the best play here is shoving all in, so that's what I do. All in. I put him all in for $1200 left that he has, he thinks for a long time, and in the end decides to fold, and we win this hand. I get a seat change, but I'm still in the same table. I got this seat change because I felt like it was a better spot, both for profit and also to get a better table footage. The table is pretty fun and communicative. Next hand I see pocket aces on the hijack, woman in the low jack raises to 30, I 3 bet to 110, I felt pretty confident that she would either call me or 4 bet, she calls and we go heads up to the flop, flop comes 10-5 deuce with 2 clubs, I have the ace of clubs, she checks to me and I'm gonna see bet, I see bet 1 third of the pot, $80, she calls, turns a jack of spades, now there are two flush draws in the board, she checks to me, effective stack is 1600, most of the times I'm gonna bet for value here again, something like $270, but looking at her, I just felt like it wasn't the moment to do so, if I decide to bet here, I will have to call a check raise, many times in live poker, you can really feel people's energy and make decisions out of that, and this was one of those cases, I just felt it was better to check, and that's what I did, I checked back, river comes a 3 of spades, now if she checks, I'm gonna bet, which is what she does, she checks, and now I'm pretty confident I'm winning, by the way she played, I decide to bet 3 quarters of the pot, 310, she thanks for a while, and decides to call, that's a call right, I show my hand, and she shows 10 jack offsuit guys, so thankfully she didn't check raise this river, otherwise I would be in a pretty gross spot, where I really don't know what I would do, thankfully I didn't bet that turn as well, but by the way she played the river, I don't even know if she would check raise that turn, and we lose this hand, now prepare yourselves cause this hand is really interesting, I see a 7 offsuit from the big blind, hijack open raises to 30, button and I call, we go 3 ways to the flop, which comes ace 10 3, 2 hearts, I check, hijack c bets $50, button folds, and this c bet, I felt a little strength from him, so even though I called, I was already cautious that I could be running into ace x with a better kick than mine, such as ace king, ace queen, ace jack, but in the turn, the scenario completely changes, cause now I got two pair, I check again, and now he bets 140, I'm still feeling like he is strong, he could have all the ace king, ace queen, ace jack, he could also have something like ace x of hearts, which would be top pair and a flush draw, so now I'm feeling like doing something out of line, which is shoving all in, effective stack is really deep, so if I shoved all in, it would be kind of strange, and he might feel like I'm trying to get him out of the pot, pretty much the only hands I'm losing to him are ace 10 and ace 3, and one last combination of aces, I really feel like I'm winning, and I really feel like if I shove all in here, it would represent like I'm trying to get him out of the pot, and he might just call with ace king, ace queen, which I don't think he would be able to fold, so again, my intuition says for me to shove all in instead of check raising, which would be totally fine to do as well, like check raising to something like $480, so I decide to follow my intuition and shove all in, I'm all in, 
He looks suspicious. Maybe he's thinking I'm trying to get him out of the pot with a flush draw or something like this. He considers his options for more than a minute and in the end decides to call. So I'll in call for a $3,600 pot and let's go. River is a 7 of diamonds. I don't even think I needed that 7 but it's always welcome. I show my hand. He mucks without being mad with that river so I was most likely winning on the turn already and we win this one. Trying to break the table. <laughs> now we have the biggest stack at the table and there are still lots of interesting hands ahead. Next thing I'm in the big blind with king queen suited, under the gun plus one, open raises to 30. I decide to flat here instead of 3 betting. Versus under the gun makes a lot of sense to flat and disguise the strength of my hand. Flop comes king jack 4 with 2 clubs. I got top pair. I check. Under the gun checks back. Turn is a 7 of clubs. Now I'm definitely gonna bet. I decide to bet 2 thirds of the pot to $40. Under the gun plus 1 calls. River is an 8 of hearts. Pretty much a blank. And now I'm gonna bet again. I decide to bet 120. He calls. I show my hand. And we win this one. I'm winning a lot so far. Next hand I'm in the small blind with pocket tens. Under the gun raises to 30. Woman in the button 3 bets to $70. And here I'm gonna code for bet with pocket tens. There's no chance I'm calling and playing out of position. Especially because my range would be pretty face up that I would have a strong hand but not strong enough to 3 bet. So I rather just 4 bet all my hands that I decide to play. So and then under the gun just shoves all in for more than 1.6k. Everybody falls to me. And I fold as well. Next hand I'm in the cutoff. With queen jack suited. Under the gun straddle. Woman in the hijack. Open raises to 60. And with this particular hand. Versus this particular woman. In this particular spot. I decided to flat call. Which is something I will rarely do. Most of the times I will either 3 bet or fold. In this spot. But I felt like I had a big edge versus her. In position post flop. And this hand develops pretty well post flop as well. So I call. Other two players call and four players see the flop, which is one where we hit trips, queen, queen, four with two hearts. They check to me, I'm the last one to act, and I definitely gonna bet here. I choose to bet half pot, only woman in the hijack calls, we go heads up to the turn, which comes an ace of hearts. This is not the best turn because she could have a flush draw that got there, so now when she checks to me I decide to check back and control the pot. River is a blink, a nine of spades, she checks to me and I'm gonna bet for value. I decide to bet 300, two thirds of the pot. She thanks for almost a minute and in the end decides to call. I show the bad news and we win this one. More than 10 hours of game, one pretty close of $2,000. If you enjoyed this vlog, there are 63 others that you will also enjoy as well. The mission of this channel is helping you become a better poker player and see you next time. Hi, man. Good luck, bro.